So for today, we're going to be looking at the seasonal challenges for week seven. If you guys don't know, I usually do these weekly. So that way you guys can see what's up uh, if you guys are not like in front of the TV or anything like that. So if you guys like the video, like, comment, subscribe. Other than that, let's get into it. So the first one is Antiquarian 7, uh, return the seventh relic to the helm. Also defeat powerful Vex throughout the system, defeating more powerful combatants will award bonus progress. So this one you can do pretty much anywhere for the Vex part, for the relic part, obviously you have to complete the story missions, but if you are keeping up with the story, then this is the one you're waiting for. For the Vex one, honestly, that one just, uh, certain strikes are really good for this one. Uh, and that's pretty much it. You can obviously go to patrol areas as well, which is probably what I would do and go to a lost sector and just kill that stuff there. But yeah, that's what I would do if I wanted to target the Vex portion specifically. Uh, efficient expedition, complete expedition in each destination in under 10 minutes. This one I already had got unlocked. I don't know if it, it'll be hard now because people are actually trying to make the expeditions last really long. So depends if you guys can complete this or not. I would just tell you to either find people that could to complete it or hopefully you get lucky and, and the expeditions aren't that long for you. Next one is underhanded defeat targets with sidearms and defeat jolted combatants. So this is funny because the current sidearm that is out for this season, the pirate one is actually, you, you can actually roll arc jolt on it. So that's pretty funny. If you have that set, then I literally just use that weapon because that's going to be the best one for this. Uh, shaper two level seasonal shaped weapons to level 10. This one's funny because I've yet to get one of these weapons, let alone two more dog. Like this is good. This one's going to be annoying if you're RNG shit like mine. So thankfully they did make the change where if you have a certain upgrade, then the first weapon that you, uh, target is actually a red border. So that is really cool. Closing in, defeat targets with machine guns, sniper rifles, and swords in Gambit. Defeating guardians will award bonus progress. This one's going to be a little annoying. I'm not going to lie. Obviously, you can combine sniper rifles with the other two heavies, sword or machine gun. I would probably do sniper and machine gun because I think machine gun would be the fastest one and then put on sword because uh, sniper, you're definitely going to have for all of it. So you might as well just have the sniper on and then switch from machine gun to sword. Uh, complete crucible matches in the glory rank playlist, e earn bonus progress for wins. This one I never get because I don't want to go into the glory rank playlist, but I might as well do it this season since, uh, fucking cash, even control has like SBMM on. So I might as well do rank or yeah. Uh, grandmaster complete any strike nightfall strike on grandmaster. This one. I don't know the rotation of the of the grandmasters this season so this one actually might be easier or hard depending on which nightfalls we have so that's pretty much it for the challenges not that not, nothing too crazy from all this i'm not gonna lie to you guys uh i think the only annoying one will be shaper two because i again i don't even have one of the weapons unlocked yet so that's fun for eververse we have the laguna cruiser which i can already tell you i don't like yeah i'm not a fan of this shader never really was Although it does give you a really good blue for a glow. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we have dreaming shimmer. We have gigantis carrier or gigantis. It's a terrible one. Uh, hit the bot, uh, hit the bag. I was going to say hit the bar. Um, yeah, whatever. And then for the stuff down here, we have directive crash, which is a really cool Siva ornament for a sleeper but i don't know if I'll, i like i would want to buy this because like it's cool but when am i ever using sleeper if i'm being honest uh blue steel which is a really good ornament for the uh shards of galanor which i will be making a video this week Then we have Metropolitan Frig Frigate, which is just a regular ship. This almost looks like the Galaga ship from the that game Galaga, I think it was called. Um, Skiff Scooter, Scooter, which what happened? Like, didn't didn't Bungie say they weren't going to sell anything that was specifically tied to the current season from Eververse? Like, I'm pretty sure they said that. Like, I could be obviously. Uh, like dreaming this, but I'm pretty sure people got, yeah, yeah. People got really fucking mad in, in one season. I think it was season of the worthy maybe 
where they were selling something specific. No, it was Shadow Keep. Yeah, Shadow Keep. They were selling stuff specifically from like the dungeon in Eververse, and people got really mad. Um, I might have to make a video on this. Uh, Metropolis Shell, which is I've seen this shell come up a few times. And then Hatchling Huddle. Oh no. Hmm. Maybe I'll probably get this. As for the shaders, we have Argent Territorn. If you did not pick this up the previous week, I think it was, or the week after before that, I suggest this one highly because this shader is one of the few shaders that actually sh lets your armor become one color. So for example, if like, let's say the, actually, this is a perfect example because these arms actually, I I, I, fuck it, we'll, we'll do it right now. Um, Cause this is actually a pretty good example. So for the arms, you guys will see, or you guys will notice that there's like this weird discoloration, almost like a burnt look on that. And it's for pretty much almost every shader. So uh, yeah, there's a difference there. So, okay, this is, oof, this is gross. So the armor itself is actually this color, this like white color right here, but the, where you can see the, like the, the blades, that's like this, like, I'm gonna just show you. So you guys can see like a charred color right here on the, on the arms, um, not on the other side. So it, it is obviously the blades are making that piece charcoal. So with Argent Territory, it actually just combines all the colors. Uh, actually, this isn't a good example because, well, it does com combine the colors. It's just that the texture is still there. That's why it doesn't look like it. Let me just show you guys real quick because I do, I do love this shader. Like this shader, I think is one of the more better shaders we have because I know Titans and Warlocks go through this a lot as well, but to go to show you like a really good example, um, was this arm already Moonfang? Yeah, it is already Moonfang. Okay. So Moonfang is a good example. I did this in the previous video too, but I'm going to show you again because I really do think this is important. Uh, you guys can see that Moonfang has one side that's white and one side that's gold. Pretty much all any shade that you put on it is going to be like that. It's just going to be two different colors. But for Ar Argent Territorn, it combines both sides to one color. So that's why I think it's a really important shader. Because if you want to combine uh, like this, this arm, for example, it's a really good arm for, for example, let's say uh, a Gundam look. If you, let's say you want to use this for a Gundam look then you can combine this shader with Argentari or this arm with Argentaritorn or the other shader, which is from Last Wish, uh, the Dreaming Spectrum, one of my favorite shaders. Uh, as you guys can see, it combines both of those colors perfectly. So just be aware that there's, from what I've seen, it's only those two shaders that allow you to combine all of the armor pieces into one color. So that's why I highly recommend this shader. It's one of the best shaders for that uh shattered sinew which is this is a really good white and red shader and that's all i'm gonna say there's no but it's really good white and white and red shader i don't know where i was going with that uh we have neo pop wave which is a really good shader for like a turquoise pink look if you want it also does have black i'm personally a I, I personally like it but i never use it because i never find armor pieces that look good with it and then uh, Vibrant Medusa, this shader is really good if you want to combine the this shader with the ornament for um, that one stone helmet for the Titans, the ornament specifically. So that's pretty much it for the shaders. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Uh, I'm going to have uh, a few pieces of content this week, some, some fashion stuff, and I'm still working on the PvE stuff because uh, quite frankly, I'm not playing this game right now. Um, I'm actually playing this game right here, uh, Genshin Impact, uh, just because I needed a little break from Destiny 2. So that's what I've been playing so far. If you guys would like to see some non-Destiny 2 content, I do have a second channel that I'm currently working on, but I probably shouldn't tell you guys about that yet, just because I really need to finish that first. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you guys want to see anything Destiny 2 related, let me know in the comments below. I'll get started on it, or I should say I will look into me doing it and then see but yeah let me know what you guys think and i'll see you guys later